Good morning. Welcome to the Trend England Show. Our new digs here. Glad to have you with us this morning. If you're just tuning in for the first time to the Trend England Show, we are here in the uh, the, the first half of the 9 a.m. hour every weekday. When, uh, we, when, 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 when I'm in town, when, when we're around. So, yeah, I don't want to make a promise I can't keep. But uh, pretty much every weekday we are here, including this morning. It is the third week of the Oklahoma legislative session. We're going to talk about that. Are they going to, uh, are they going to need us? I, I've never smoked. I've never smoked anything. Uh, I, I have to throw that in because, uh, because I, I, I once was uh, sitting in a high school class and listened to a teacher confront a student outside in the hallway and the, the teacher said, are you smoking? And the guy said, I don't smoke, at least not cigarettes. And he wasn't doing his part for the children, at least if we're going to make Oklahoma schools more dependent on cigarette taxes, we're going to get to that. It is policy absurdity on steroids well maybe we should say on nicotine but we're going to get there in just a minute i have to uh, invite you to this saturday the oklahoma growth and opportunity summit it is in tulsa this saturday you're invited it's a great deal it's an all-day uh, it's an all-day event uh, dr Se uh, former senator dr tom coburn is going to be the kickoff keynote speaker i am going to be the lunch keynote speaker talking about our Oklahoma State Constitution, also just talking about constitutions. What good are they? Who cares about constitutions? I'm going to talk about that at lunch this Saturday at the Oklahoma Growth and Opportunity Summit. They have a bunch of breakout panels on activism, on state budgets, on uh, all kinds of policy topics and uh, topics about how to become a more effective citizen, a more effective citizen activist. It's going to be really exciting. You can find all the details on our Facebook page. Go to the Facebook page, ocpathink.org on Facebook, or you can go to, uh, well, go to the Facebook page. That's the easiest place to find it. And uh, yesterday we had a great event, by the way, with Dr. Daniel Dreischbach. If you missed the event, you can watch the video. It is posted on our Facebook page. And uh, so I, I hope you will do that. A little bit of news from around the world before we get right back here to Oklahoma City city in Turkey just uh, just within the last couple of days they have sentenced six journalists and academics to life in prison for ostensibly being involved in the uh, the failed coup a couple of uh, what was that a year ago I don't know lose track of time but uh, uh, they, they're throwing journalists into prison because supposedly they were connected with this cleric who lives actually in the United States who uh, the Erdogan regime is blaming for that coup and so now six actually one of the one of the journalists was uh, had been ordered to be released by the high court in Turkey but other courts I guess more loyal to the regime there have refused to do that so that is the latest from around the world uh, in uh, from Turkey in France, the French economy is improving. What does improvement mean, though? It means that their unemployment has finally dipped just below 9%, 8.9% unemployment in France. That's a big win for them. That's lower than it's been in years, thanks to their new, uh, relatively new Prime Minister Emmanuel Macron's labor reforms. People say labor all, labor policy doesn't matter. You know, it, uh, we're, we're, we're better off if we have, uh, you know, more control by unions and all that. And uh, France, even, even the socialists, by the way, had been supporting labor reforms, but they couldn't get it done. And so Emmanuel Macron was elected last year, and he actually got it done, and that has been spurring the French economy, although they've got a long way to catch up. Meanwhile, in Britain, they are falling behind a new study in Britain showing that home ownership, a decline in home ownership in the last 20 years among middle-income 25 to 34-year-olds, the, the, this is a theme that we have to, uh, that we, we've got to keep coming back to in Oklahoma. One of the best things about living in Oklahoma, and I can say this because I've lived in the Seattle area, the Los Angeles area, the Washington DC area. One of the great blessings of living in Oklahoma, whether you're in Oklahoma City, whether you're in Okarchi, whether you're in Tulsa or Enid, wherever you are, one of the great blessings is the cost of living here is much, much lower than it is across most of the rest of the United States. Particularly, I would say, I mean, you know, you get outside of the cities in a lot of other places in the country, the cost of living might go down a little bit. But particularly, even in our big cities in Oklahoma, 
our cost of living is much lower. That's a blessing. That means that people who uh, who, who don't make as much as uh, as uh, you know people might make in Los Angeles can still have a much better quality of life. Can still have a lot more money to spend on their families, on their kids, investing in their businesses. It's easier to build a business here. We should not forget that. And when you go and you look at places like Europe. You find middle income people who can't buy houses, who can't buy cars, who can't fill their gas tanks because of a combination of tax policies and regulatory policies that make it very, very expensive to live. And uh, new, new research out of Britain confirming that. Okay. Our main subject for today, and I mentioned at the beginning, and I say this every time I talk about it, look, I don't smoke, I don't, you know, with, with my allergies, I, I can't even be around people who are smoking, right? So I, I have no, no, uh, no love loss, no, uh, uh, no concern for smoking itself. But what I have a concern for, and I hope you have a concern for, is just policy that makes sense in Oklahoma. Do we, do we want to shift Oklahoma to a place? I mean, we, we've already done, done this with the lottery, right? And people always make this arguing, uh, argument about gambling expansion. And there's an argument going on right now in the legislature about should we expand gambling uh, to uh, ball and dice gambling? I'm not even, I, to be perfectly honest, I'm not even exactly sure what that is. Uh, <clears throat> but who cares, right? I mean, should, do we want to make our state more dependent? on smoking and gambling and lottery tickets to pay for state government and in particular to pay for education. Right now, it, it gets worse. I mean, that, that is going to make some people squeamish. Some people are going to say, that, that just doesn't feel right to me. But other people are going to say, who cares, right? Those are easy things to tax. I hear this all the time when I talk to people who are political insiders. They say, come on, Trent, you know, you can get away with it because there aren't really that many people who smoke. They're mostly lower income. You can raise their taxes. They don't have lobbyists at the Capitol. They can't fight back. I mean, sure, the cigarette tax companies might squeal, but they're unpopular, right? So they can't fight back. So let's just do this because it's easy. And don't tell me that it's bad policy. But it, it's not just bad policy. It is policy that's destined to fail. Let's look at why that is. Uh, and there, by the way, there was an art, the reason, one of the reasons I'm talking about this, it's a live issue in the legislature. And the new debate is between should, uh, should they try to raise taxes on cigarettes by 75 cents a pack or a dollar fifty a pack? The governor wants a dollar fifty a pack. A lot of the health agency leaders want a dollar fifty a pack. The Oklahoman wants a dollar fifty a pack. In fact, they're not just saying that on their editorial page. They put that in their news pages yesterday. Basically, ran a, a front page, bottom of the front page story that was all just uh, quotes, one after another, quotes from people saying, it's got to be a dollar fifty, it's got to be a dollar fifty, it's got to be a dollar fifty. And I thought, you know, look, I should take this up on the program and show just how utterly vacuous and, and, and foolish is that argument. Because all of those people, that what they want is they want to get a bunch of money for government and pretend like they have Oklahoma's best interest at heart. That's what they want. They want to feel good about policy, but what they really want is the money. And, and they're, they're not ashamed to admit that. Let's look at cigarette taxes. I've got this. We can pull this up on the video, video stream here. And I'll, if you're listening to this on, uh, on iTunes or uh, SoundCloud or somewhere, I'll, I'll post all this on the Facebook page so you can find these maps. These maps are really important. How high are cigarette taxes in your state? I've got two maps from the Tax Foundation. And you can see here when you look at this map, Oklahoma is middle of the pack, I mean, on, on the low side, but not dramatically so for cigarette taxes. We are 35th in the country. Our cigarette tax is $1.03 per pack. Now, that is a little bit lower than Texas, where it's $1.41 a pack. It's a lot higher than Missouri, where it's $0.17 cents a pack. Arkansas is $1.15. Uh, Kansas is $1.29. So we are, you know, we're right there in the mix. We're, we're a lot higher than Missouri. We are somewhat lower than Kansas, Arkansas, and Texas. We are just about the same as Louisiana and a little bit higher than, than uh, Colorado. So that's where Oklahoma is on cigarette taxes. Why does it matter? Cigarettes are easily smuggled. And, and not, I mean, smuggling paints this dramatic picture. I mean, think about it. People get in their car, or, or people just happen to be traveling to other states, or they know somebody who's traveling to other states, and they say, you know, here, here, take, uh, you know, here's 50 bucks, buy me some cigarettes in that other state, uh, because 
it's going to cost a lot less, right? And people do this. People do this already. Anecdotally, you can, uh, you know, if you talk to people who smoke, you'll find people who say, well, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to Missouri, I'm going to stock up. If I know somebody who's going to Missouri, I'm going to have them buy a bunch of cigarettes. That's what people do. I've had people tell me this. It's, uh, it's also borne out by the research on cigarette smuggling. So smuggling doesn't just mean the mafia or something like that, right? Smuggling can mean people just going and buying them in other states and bringing them back here, um, which, uh, which may or may not be illegal depending on you know whether they're doing it for themselves or somebody else cigarette smuggling it happens here's the tax foundation estimate on cigarette smuggling and you can see that Oklahoma is uh, we, we are it, the estimates suggest that we have some smuggling into Oklahoma and you can see there the, the, the blue is our states where the smuggling is coming out of those states so those states are making extra cigarette tax revenue because people are going into those states buying low tax cigarettes and then bringing them to other states especially to states like New York Washington Arizona New Mexico that have really really high cigarette taxes, but also even to Oklahoma where our tax is currently a dollar and three cents. Okay, so look, taxes change people's behavior. This is not a complicated, you know, this is not a right-wing plot. This is just basic economics. And it feels like we have to say that anytime we talk about basic economics, we have to remind people, economics is not a right-wing plot. It's just human behavior. It's the way people respond to the incentives that are created by public policy, whether it's tax policy or anything else. What, if we raise cigarette taxes by $1.50 in the state of Oklahoma, here I'm looking back at the, at the tax rate map, that would take our cigarette taxes to $2.53. That's not very complicated mathematics there, right? That means our cigarette taxes would be higher than all of our surrounding states. $2.53 would be more than a dollar higher per pack than all of the surrounding states and would be more than $2 higher than cigarette taxes in Missouri and almost $2 higher than cigarette taxes in Colorado. Well, yeah, $1.70, right? Uh, that's a lot of money, right? People can do the math. That's a lot of money. That means that a lot of people will go and buy cigarettes in other states. And, and this is the great failure at the Oklahoma legislature, and it's not unique to the legislature. It's a failure in Congress. It's a failure in most states is to be realistic when they estimate how much these taxes are gonna bring in. They just pretend like everybody who buys cigarettes now will continue to buy cigarettes. They'll, they'll behave exactly the same, even though we're gonna increase the price by $1.50 a pack. That's not true. Everybody actually knows that's not true, but they don't want to admit it because they want to be able to spend the revenue. Now, I'm gonna explain something that, for, for common sense Oklahomans, you're gonna get a little offended, I think, when I explain this. And uh, <clears throat> some people might even think, oh, they couldn't possibly, they couldn't possibly be running state government that way. And I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm, this is what we do on the program, we pull back the curtain, we show you what really goes on up at the state capitol. What they want is what's called certified revenue. The actual dollars are an afterthought, frankly, because the, after, the actual dollars come a lot later. Right, what they want is certified revenue. What does that mean? That means that if they can get the, uh, if, if they can get the people who look at proposed legislation and put and they, they estimate how much money, if it's a tax bill or a fee bill, they estimate how much money it's going to bring in, what they get to spend the estimate. Right, you see, they get to budget based on the estimate. And you, you might say, well, wait a second, what if the money doesn't actually come in? Well, well, first of all, that's a problem for another day, right? And politicians get credit not really for the money that flows out. They get credit for their good intentions as expressed in the budget, right? And so what they want to do is to be able to say, I have given you this. I have given you this. I've given you this, right? But it's not real dollars. It's a promise to pay dollars in the future. That's what a budget is, especially when you're passing a budget in May that kicks in in July and runs through the next June, right? You see how it's, it's all a promise. It's all, essentially, it's, it's speculative. It's based on guesses about how much money the state is going to have, right? And so if you can bump that guess up, you have more, more promises to spread around. So this is, this is particularly a problem with cigarette taxes, right? Because we know that behavior will change and cigarette smoking is, is going down overall. It's going down in Oklahoma. It's going down nationwide. Uh, 
so, I mean, you, you have that, right? But it's also going to be affected by smuggling, people buying out of state. Well, I mean, you know, potentially people accelerating, they're quitting. The Tax Foundation, I could show you their other research that shows that when you raise cigarette taxes, you get a little spike in revenue, and then it tends to come down. That's, the, that's what usually happens. It tends to come down and, and wind up coming in, especially in year two and beyond, coming in a lot lower than what the, uh, what the revenue projections were. But what happens when the money's not there, right? Well, nobody blames the politicians. I mean, look at what's going on right now, right? People don't blame the politician. People, I mean, some people still blame the Supreme Court for striking down an illegal cigarette tax that the legislature passed. People don't blame the legislature. Some people do. We do, right? It was blatantly illegal. The court had to strike it down. It's not the court's fault. But people blame the economy. People, uh, you know, people just, people don't know who to blame, right? Because the budget was passed months ago, if not a year ago. I mean, think about that, right? The, the budget that we're in right now, by the time we have a new budget, will still be in the old budget that will have been passed a year ago, right? So this is the, this is the government budget game. This is the legislative budget game. They want a big number. Cigarette taxes help them get a big number. Whether it actually comes in or not is a question we, the people who are serious about public policy, need to be asking and need to be demanding that our state legislators ask. And it's, it's really bad when it comes to cigarette taxes and gross production taxes. We've talked about that on the program before as well. So $1.50 a pack versus 75 cents a pack. That's the debate going on in the legislature. What if we raised it by, a dollar, by 75 cents a pack instead of $1.50 a pack? Let's look back at our, I'm going to look back at the tax map here. If we raised it by 75 cents a pack, look, we, we still wind up, we're higher than Texas, higher than Louisiana, higher than Arkansas, way higher than Missouri, higher than Kansas, um, a, little bit, uh, a little bit higher than New Mexico, though not by that much, a lot higher than Colorado. Um, but not, not as much, right? We're talking about less than a dollar per pack higher than the rest of those states. People are already bringing cigarettes in from Missouri. That's where the biggest differential is. But I mean, just talking about practical policy right now, a lot of Oklahoma is not close to Missouri. We share a little, little border with them, but not a, not a, it's, it's one of our, uh, it's one of our smaller borders with uh, adjacent states. And, and so if you raise cigarette taxes by 75 cents a pack, Obviously, you're going to spur less smuggling. You're going to spur less, uh, less behavior change, and you're going to be more likely to bring in the amount of revenue that, that, that they're actually estimating. Now, the one other thing I have to mention when it comes to cigarette taxes, because they don't talk about it at the legislature, we talk about it at the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs and feel like we're a voice in the wilderness, which is just strange considering how much money is at stake. Did you know, did you know that some cigarette taxes collected in the great state of Oklahoma actually become subsidies for cigarette purchasing. Did you know that? Some cigarette taxes are actually funneled back to smoke shops selling cigarettes to lower their prices and subsidize the sale of cigarettes. How does it happen? It happens on, at, at tribal smoke shops. It happens when, uh, when, when a tribal smoke shop, an Indian tribal smoke shop, sells cigarettes, they, they collect Whatever the state sales tax is, right now they collect a dollar and three cents. If it goes up to, uh, it goes, you know, if it goes up seventy-five cents or a dollar fifty or whatever happens, they collect that, but they keep half of it. They keep fifty percent of it. They they get it rebated back, right? So they give it to government. Government gives it back, and uh, and the, the the tribal governments get to decide what to do with it. Many of them actually give some of that money back to the smoke shops themselves, so that they can what? So that they can be more competitive. So that they can price their cigarettes lower. So that they can subsidize the price of cigarettes in tribal smoke shops and that will be one effect of you know it's not just the smuggling from out of state it's not just changing purchasing behavior out of state right raising the cigarette taxes by a dollar fifty or even seventy five cents is going to create a massive windfall to tribal governments they get to get keep half of whatever that amount is and some of that we know because this is how it works today some of that will turn around and become subsidies for purchases in tribal smoke shops does that seem crazy to you it seems crazy to me does it seem crazy that that there are actually legislators talking about making our schools, our teachers, our kids in Oklahoma more dependent on smoking, right? If they pass the governor's $1.50 a pack increase, we're going to need some bumper stickers that say, you know, keep smoking for the children, right? Maybe we could get T-Set to print us up some bumper stickers that encourage people to keep smoking because that's, I mean, they're talking about a teacher pay raise based on cigarette tax revenues. Right? I mean, this is, this is where good public policy, I guess, I, 
I was going to say good public policy is hard. I don't think it's that hard. I don't think it's that complicated. Right? We know that from Medicaid audits, from other kinds of efficiencies in government, ending low priority programs like the free promotion of bars and nightclubs that TSET does, like the Hollywood handouts that, uh, where they collect tax money and literally give it to filmmakers, including just hobby filmmakers in the state of Oklahoma. I mean, it's a straight trans wealth transfer from one group of people who aren't as popular, non-filmmakers, to another group of people who are, you know, they're, they're hip, they're cool, right? Just ask the legislature. The legislature gives them four million bucks a year. That's your money, right? Obviously, they're cooler than you in the opinion of your state legislators, right? By ending programs like that, by better running the programs that we have, by rooting out the kind of corruption that has caused the health department to wind up $30 million short, that, that has caused the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Center for Medicaid to, uh, the, the, our, our Medicaid program to wind up millions of dollars short by misspending federal money, right? All we have to do is run government better in Oklahoma, and we could pay our teachers better. We could have a lot of the things that we want without these crazy, uh, crazy tax increases. Almost the worst way to raise revenue, relying on revenue sources that are highly volatile and that are decreasing over time. If you like our new digs, give us a thumbs up. If you're uh, if you're watching on the uh, live stream, if you're watching on the archive, give us a thumbs up. If you like the new uh, the new backdrop here, everything we've uh, spruced it up a little bit for you and uh, moved, moved out of our former radio broadcasting center into something that's a little bit more exciting for video. Plus, I get to stand up. I like that a lot. If you have ideas for the show, if you have topics you want us to cover, if you have things that, uh, that you want us to investigate at the legislature, bills you want us to talk about, please do that. I am going to mention a couple things we're going to talk about coming up. One is more health care freedom for Oklahomans. If you want more access to care, if you want better prices in health care in Oklahoma, one way to get it is with more freedom. You allow people to make more choices, you allow a more competitive marketplace, you allow more people to provide care, and uh, that is their efforts at the legislature to do that by making it easier for nurse practitioners who frankly, I mean a lot of, a lot of people go to the doctor, they already see a nurse, nurse practitioner, they never see a physician when they go to the doctor, but did you know those nurse practitioners right now have to pay a, uh, yeah, I mean, basically have to pay a sort of protection money to a physician for the privilege of taking care of Oklahomans. There's legislation in, in the Oklahoma legislative session going on right now to make it easier for nurse practitioners to provide care to Oklahomans. That's something we're going to talk about on future programs. Also legislation, Representative Kevin Calvey has legislation to try to, to try to make our criminal justice system make a little bit more sense by, uh, um, by rationalizing some of the fines and fees. We're going to talk about that too. If you have other ideas, send them to me, leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching the Trent England Show on this Tuesday morning.